Hello there, welcome friends. Today, the 24th of January 2023, is another Forged Alliance Forever special. Today, 1593 rated 4 versus 4 team game taking place on Adaptive Endera. I realize the uh, teams were a little brief last time, so let's go ahead, see if we can put those on display. Take another little look. Today's code name, Ding Dong, or simply Game D, or of course the fourth letter of the alphabet, or rather the fourth game cast this week, the fourth week into 2023. And just before we hit go, some people have already been asking in chat, which is really nice to see, what game is this? And so let's answer that here and now. It's Forged Alliance, or to give it its full name, Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. Do not. I repeat, do not mix it up with Supreme Commander 2. That was an abomination of a game that was trying to tap into an economic market that may have been there in the consoles, but RTSs and consoles just don't go. The graphics are good, and that's where it ends. It's Supreme Commander 1, and then Forged Alliance being the expansion pack that allows for the fourth race. Whichever of those that you get, make sure that you at least get Forged Alliance, found on Steam or all the usual online stores. Then install the game. You'll realize, man, it's all right, but I want to play with somebody online. Head over to Forged Alliance Forever or FA Forever. Search it in Google. It's completely free once you bought the game and it's an old game. So it'll be, you know, it'll be relatively cheap. ForgedLinesForever.com. The logo is going to look something like that that I've just dropped into the top right hand side. That's how you know you're going in the right direction. It's free to sign up. That's going to give you all balance up updates, changes, new units, and of course, a massive multiplayer community. And most important of all, it's going to record your games forever and allow me to take a peek and cast them here on Games with Brains as well as all the other casters that exist. Most notably and famous of all, of course, is Guilecast. So with that massive bit of bump out the way, let's see if we can make a start here. Coming on in. At some point, we're going to make that transition real nice, real smooth. But until we do, <laughs> that'll have to do it. All right, then. Coming on in. Let's clear out the little logo and make a start. As always, it's an AI balanced game, which means it's the fires versus the coolies. You know what? I've always found myself getting confused between Team 1, Team 2, because sometimes it's left and sometimes it's right. It's usually top V, bottom, but again, it varies a little bit. So rather than calling them Team 1 and Team 2, which is kind of arbitrary anyway, I mean, you know, what, what's the difference, right? Let's keep things in a more easy for me to manner but as well hopefully easy for everyone else watching and that is we're going to have the fires versus the coolies and that's what we're going to call the teams i'm not going to say team one team two unless i have to do it is the fires versus the coolies and with that said today fires happen to be team two sometimes it's team one as well just to try and confuse me even more so we're just going to stick with fires and coolies speaking of which let's make a start Massive intro. About time we made a start. Slow it down just a tad. Hopefully uh, without playing some ridiculous music in the background. There we go. In the rear then, it's Protect. And Protect, no doubt, going rear guard air. And his job is no doubt to protect his team. We'll have to see if he lives up to his name. Going first land. And looks like the usual Formex and Hydro access there for all players. And the map, I'm sure we've already mentioned it, is Adaptive and dear. It's a 20 by 20. We'll take another look at that in a minute. Over then to his east side, it's exited. He's already appeared on one of the casts this week. He His rating there, 1561, uh, opening, Seraph oh, opening first land as Seraphin. He's going to be opening Sarah all day. Over then into the mid position for the Fireys, it's Shady Code. He's Aeon 1621 rated, also going first land. And then last but not least for the Fireys, it's Gib80. 
He's also going Aeon rated 1487. Over then to Team... Well, we're not going to call them Team 1. We're just going to call them the Coolies. Is uh, I'm reneging on my own commitments there. It's a stayer a stay r either way he's going cybran and first land into the mid slot then for the coolies it's B bio i'm not even going anywhere else it's bio he's uef um the electric blue there first land and already sending one engineer out yes indeed to the rear then it's terari uh i recognize this guy we've cast him potentially a week or two ago he's a on purple uh he'll be providing no doubt air for, for the coolies for the coolies stick to the plan and then last but not least it's Isitus, the 1348 rated also cybran also going first land this guy the lowest rated in the game all right, let's bring speed back up to zero. Uh, interesting looking map. It looks very similar to one that I recall where the land masses were actually connected on the top side. They were never connected at the bottom. There was always this weird stuff in the middle. But I recall a land mass at the top here being uh, fully connected. Otherwise looking almost identical. If anybody knows the name of the map I'm talking about, uh, do drop it in. It was a 20 by 20 map. One was a 4 before. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to see. First bomber out then from Shady Code. The fire's there. We'll have to see where's he sending on that. We also have some AI structures in mid. Anything with AAA just looks like a lot of false walls and sieve structures potentially... Ah, uh, it's a radar, a tech one. There are no defensive structures at all. I mean, you could say a radar kind of is, but not really. It's not by itself going to do anything. It's not. It's just whoever comes first served. Uh, first come, first served in the middle. And looks like a scout is about to pick up here on Bio's dropship. We'll have to see. Does Team 1 recognise it? Well, if they did... The pings are not... Oh, there goes the ping. Gib, Gib 80, wise to what's going on. Does Shady pull his bomber back down? Gib desperate to try and shut this drop down. Pings then puts down a marker. We've got another dropship ways over here. And Gib wise to that. See how quick he moved his in is over to intercept. Certainly someone who you want on your team, Gib. Somebody who can just at a glance see everything what's going on while they're expanding. Hugely important. Situational awareness is massive on this game. Shady does swing back round. A nice pickup. Able to pick up the engineers before they finish the factory. Does then go down to the interceptors, but he ain't going to care much about that. Well done there. Bio will be a little pissed does get the bomb as a consolation but that said bio moving in with his acu and so while it would have been nice to get that land factory i don't think it's going to set bio back very far we got acus moving in yes we do the fire is ascending shady code in exited in the drink meanwhile starting to set up shot with the navy got two yards about well the second yard yet yeah, is coming on looking then to go for the third as well uh, exited also expanding out in an easterly direction across the drink with his engineers not rushing dropships across. And so Gib, despite picking up that transport on radar, doesn't look like he was able to shoot it down in time. I mean, he did shoot it down, just not in time. By that engine is uh, on a scrap of health. But he's not going to worry about that. A low health NG is infinitely better than an NG that's dead. And it looks like a stayer is able to secure the area at least for now. He's sending all his air over there. I guess he thinks if I can retain this forward expansion at all costs, everything between my base and the forward expansion will rightfully fall itself into place. 
little bit of action then in the middle fire versus coolies with their air to air it's potentially more about uh, trying to prevent one side getting air dominance and of course if you've got a slight advantage in air and you can exploit that and win that advantage is just going to get ever gradually larger providing you can keep going and as long as bio keeps trickling in these inties one at a time that will work although the inti there despite being 4v1 does make it 3v3 v1 before going down just wondering here is gib 80 is he wanting to where's he set oh, okay he's just grab it gathering together his air I'm curious to whether Gib 80 is going to make a move over here. And if we look there from the top left to the bottom right, or what would be northwest to southeast, it is pretty much a 50 50 split. We see we have a few mechs yet left to be reclaimed. But where the coolies have got it in the northwest, looks like the fires are going to get it in the southeast, providing Exited can hold on to the solitary ng that he's got here i'm kind of surprised he grabs these two and then cancels and goes over here you would have thought he'd have tried to set up shop or get these two in some way put a factory down who knows what his thinking was there perhaps he thought one of his teammates is going to move in either way these mixes are completely vulnerable and exposed Some engines getting massacred here from Exited, belonging to Isitus. Isitus, though, with a perfect counter. Submarines. But looks like Exited is going to cause carnage. And indeed he does. Takes out every single NG that Isitus had uh, support in the Navy there. And uh, Exited looks like he's backing that up he also does have he does have a couple of subs here and um, but two subs versus three well don't take a genius to figure the where that's going to go of course the frigates are kind of redundant in that exchange a small drop here from bio i thought he was going to go after the ng but now he's going after the sieve structures we'll have to see what do those sieve structures give well it's gonna take a moment or two to chew through the hit points i'm just curious it's a uef residential building and only has the uef tanks destroyed it only 61 mass so is it worth it well doesn't even pay for the tank does it well nearly Isitis, I think, did quite well to get Navy out as quick as he did, considering he lost all his build power and exited here already on his fifth naval yard and is assisting that naval yard. And with a little cheeky drop here, I wonder if he's going to manually try and just capture those or if it's just going to be a reclaim. So Isitus is moving to intercept the dropship. I wonder if he's going to get it. Well, it's not going to matter. It's too late. But, oh, he does realise. At moment there, I thought Exited had forgotten about it and was going to lose three engineers to one. But he does wake up. Although not before Isitus grabbed one of them. Coolies managed to get one sub inside Gibbs base. And uh, Gibb having to pull a sub all the way back from the front line to deal with it. And it looks like Ace Day is not going to hang around uh, to wait for that. He's just carrying on pushing through. I wonder what the objective of A-State is with this. Is he just doing it to try and pull forces out of position? Is it more like a scouting run? Does get a few shots off onto the naval yard, but uh, it's basically pointless, right?
exited now with quite a sizable T1 force. Is he going to pick off that MG that's no doubt moving in to reclaim this mech? Well, not before time. Instead, he's going to pick off the other one. Looks like the Central Islands finally fallen into the Fiery's hands in no small part down to Shady's aggressive ACU. Bio's ACU in the drink, two-thirds of the way done, three-quarters now. In fact, uh, gun there flying off real quick. He's no doubt tech two to be able to upgrade that quick without assistance. He then reclaims a couple of Auroras going atop of him. And if you saw how quick he was able to reclaim that, he is for sure tech two. What I have to see is Bio's ACU enough to retake the central estate. He puts out uh, a radar right off the bat. What does he see? Well, that's what he can see. I'm surprised he doesn't put a factory down. At, uh, even a Tech 2 ACU is very, very fast at building down Tech 1 land factories. It was always something I like to do if... You know, you could very quickly get two or three land factories down. And, you, you know, if you, if you were 10, 15 minutes into the game, you could get those putting out engineers and you could have a Tech 2 ACU that's out by itself up to Tech 3 in no time at all. I'm sure, though, with all this air overhead, he's going to want to put down uh, AAA, but looks like first order of business is a Tech 2 point defense. And that will deal with the units here but is he gonna put down triple a i mean you don't really want too many enemy aircraft over top of your acu if nothing else it's providing continuous intel for the enemy that especially if a couple of them are a on man you don't want to risk it looks like gib is finally making a move for this northern plot and i guess a stayer he he he, he went full aggressive Initially getting it, but then didn't put that much into holding on to it. I guess he just thought handful of units and then I'll stop. But that's not going to be enough. Gib is almost for sure going to win that Northern Ireland off. And that will then give a distinct advantage to the Fireys. They'll have had the Southeastern. If they're going to reclaim the Northwestern Island, looks like they've all but got the Central Island. That said, though, Bio is making a move. Hiya, Matt. Everyone alive? Somebody dropping in chat? Yes, indeed. Nice to see you. Although, unfortunately, again, completely task saturated when I'm narrating. And even then, I managed to get stuff wrong. I just don't got the APM spare. But nice to see you. Everyone is still alive. It's still 4v4 here on the 14th minute. Taking a look at the incomes, it's 426 versus 430 on mass. And so you couldn't get much closer there if you tried. Within about one or two percentage points. Incomes 191 versus 191. As soon as that, yeah, 192, 192. Perhaps team one a hair above, but it's almost, yeah, now they're moving up neck and neck again. So the two teams couldn't be more even. Incidentally, AI balancing it there 100%. Just one point split in the two teams. Uh, the Coolies, or Team 1, one point ahead at 15.94 versus 15.93. Looks like Estea is desperately trying to hold on. He's got a couple of engineers. He puts down a T1 point defense. That will beat Aurora's by himself. We'll have to see. If that's enough. Meanwhile, Exited starting to push into Icy Tissa's south now. The 1348 rated Exited. 200 or so points ahead. That said though, Icy Tiss playing real well in the Navy. And for now it looks like Tech versus Spam. At least one unit. We've got one destroyer there from Isitis. Now a second. Oh, 
and those will pick off the frigates and the subs there belonging to exited exited not interestingly enough though not pulling back is continuing to press what appears to be a completely lost cause i'm surprised he didn't try and pull back even just a little bit try and reconsolidate and now we have shady moving in to assist with torpedo bombers a couple of them are going to get a second pass on that one destroyer and it looks like they may be able to get it. Well, just a couple and indeed it does go down. Finally, the coolies there moving in to assist. Air from Terrari. And it's continuing to pick off isolated groups of air there from Exited. Very nice. It's a shame that Isitis had to lose the Tech 2 destroyer, but, you know, it could have been a lot worse. He had more destroyers. He does now have a cruiser in, of course, they're basically a floating SAM site. And then some, meanwhile, in the northern side of things, it's mainly spam. We do have some Tech 2 and Shady and Gib80 working together here. Both of those picking on Estea. Estea, rather. And looks like everybody's throwing everything into the mix there. Stuff flying off everywhere. And it looks like the Coolies are going to win that one. Or at the very least, Gib80 pulls back. This is a bit of a mistake here from Gib. Shady adds two high value units up front. He left them exposed. I think if he just stayed with him, he would have, well, I'll say one for sure. It looks like he's, well, I don't know about winning, actually. As soon as I said so, we see Bio moving in as well to assist. And so it is becoming a little more of a 2v2 <laughs> and protect. Extremely cheeky here with a solitary engineer and manual reclaim as well to grab the mass. Meanwhile, in the south side, looks like the battle is right up against Isitus's main dockyards. Exited, continuing to press, and he's and he's right there. The only minor advantage that ICT has, uh, the, sorry, that IC has, let's just call him IC, is he can hide his ships, if you want to call it hide, on the other side of the dockyard, and the dockyards are going to then absorb a lot of the hit points. Again, that only works up to a point, right? If you get completely outnumbered, you, they're going to absorb the hit points and go down anyway. But when it's really close like this, you can use your dockyards as, a, as almost like as a shield. And then Bio comes in just with a couple of frigates. But I think the deceptive intel on it has forced Exited away, perhaps assuming there's far more enemy ships than there really were. And that is thanks to the little the, the deceivers that are aboard the UEF frigates there. I think it's a very underrated sort of piece of technology, at, certainly at the Tech 1 stage. It, it's massive. And it looks like Bio was able to kick the Fireys out of the centre, with the one exception of uh, one Aurora, and interestingly enough, uh, a Mex and a Hydro. But otherwise completely dominate and he's continuing to walk around at this stage at almost 20 minutes he's dicing with death a little bit coming over here completely undefended but it looks like uh, he's got away with it to fire his have a clue he's there well they saw something on radar but there was nothing giving it away and looks like Gib80 just went for pure numbers of Auroras and then went to move and just overwhelms the point defense. We see there's one point defense remaining here. <laughs> oh, and there it finally goes, but it's just not going to be enough. Just too many Auroras. And it looks like there were potentially a couple of artillery. And indeed, yeah, Gib80 dropping on the far side. So he did get a couple of artillery units in. Meanwhile, a real six or one half a dozen of the other battles still taking place. Although with Gib now moving mobile shields in, I was going to say that could tip the battle his way. 
But then with these torpedoes moving in, torpedo bombers, maybe not. Although they're not going to get more than a couple of passes, thanks to these mobile flak. Very nice play indeed from Gib80, the 1487 rated. Although he's versus a 1488, so we're talking 10 points between these two guys. Ever so slightly uh, favouring uh, the, the, the blue. Let's just call him blue. And once again, protect the cheeky mofo. Offering no assistance, but sending engines in to reclaim all the wrecks. And there are a lot of wrecks there to reclaim. Although for now, they're just walking into a wall of fire from the coolies. And the coolies actually getting a load of stuff together here. We've got cruisers, destroyers, both uh, cyber and UEF, as well as the all-important shield bow. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see all of these units handed off to the same guy. And uh, just for ease and better control. And you could move that forward here. And then that would enable IC to get his hands on all of that mass. So if we zoom out, ballpark, seven and a bit plus that, there's at least 8,000 mass still in that little area. And of course, when you, th when you think, um, for those you know who are not familiar with this game, 8,000 mass, well, here is a Tech 1 mass distraction. If you look in the lower left, it's putting out plus two mass per tick oh it's basically per second and so if you think that's putting out two every second and in that water is eight thousand just laying there you can already begin to see how long that thing has to be functional to pay for what you could send an ng here to reclaim and here you see he's doing it if we see this ng here is so far reclaimed 1000 sorry 154 now 230 mass Now it's 280, 61, 200, and that's just going to go up and up and up. Now it's 361, so it gives you an idea how quick just one little engineer can work, providing there's a mass field. Fire is meanwhile working nicely together. Pushing AS all the way back into his base, and it's not looking good for AS. We do see Bio moving in. He's got a shield, a couple of frigates, one destroyer. It's going to take a little more than that to keep this Navy out. And Gib slightly separating here from Shady. <laughs> and Protect following it up with his engineers. Protect better put out something special in the second half of this game for pinching all of his teammates' mass. It's different if you're losing battles and they're dropping stuff in that you wouldn't have got anyway, but when you're advancing into enemy territory, all the wrecks left behind are obviously going to be on your side if you're advancing. For some teammate that wasn't even involved to just start reclaiming is generally not seen as... Hmm... Depends what they're doing, right? If he can then throw something out on his team, go, wow, how did you suddenly afford all those strat bombers? It's like, well, I was pinching all your wrecks. Oh, that's why I had no eco. Uh, yeah. But the fire is here looking very aggressive. And AS losing, what's that? Four of, <laughs> four of the eight, and it's just getting worse and worse, including what I assume there was the HQ, based on the fact that that's where the assist was. Just two yards left, and at this point, may as well leave an NG behind to try and just get a little bit of mass. Because everything else, <laughs> we already know, Protect's going to have NGs on the case in no time at all. And here he is! That said, though, things looking a lot better for Team 2 down here. Oh, so hang on. Now, let me rephrase. Th things looking much better for the coolies down here. Got it wrong anyway, because Team 2's are the fireys today, but... 
And I like what I see. I see now also moving in with his engines, reclaiming this. And all of that reclaim is just going to enable him to fund more and more into Navy. And despite the fact that Exited's got about a 10 to 1 ratio outnumbering him on Naval Yards, as well as this additional uh, spot here, of course, uh, these mass points are going to give Exited more economy in the long run. Sometimes short-term reclaim outnumbers long-term mass income. And Gib80 now moving on to the mainland of the Coolies. It's like the northernmost slot is the first one to get it. AS. So many shields here from Gib80. Those those shields are just, you know, at some point when you layer upon layer upon layer, doesn't matter how many point defense you build, it's just not going to chew through. And Gib80, interestingly enough, doesn't hang around, pulls back. And that's because Bio has managed to get three battle cruisers out. And those battle cruisers don't miss those beam weapons. And as long as he keeps manoeuvring them, there's no guarantee that these Aeon weapons are going to hit. But he has almost lost one of them. And this is where you think, Bio, if he just had a couple of floaty shields with this... ...to help defend, but uh, it doesn't look like he does. He does pick off that destroyer. That forces the fireys back. That keeps AS in the game. AS has got to be very thankful for that. If it weren't for those three battle cruisers, his base was wiped out for sure. And what is this? Terrari has got a ball of restorers. 23 restorers. That about two seconds on any commander. The commander goes bang. A commander that's shielded up to the hill maybe will last three seconds. We'll have to see. And now we're getting battleships in from Exited as well. The first one leading the charge. He's loud and proud and he's happy to let his opponent know. Here, have a look at what I've got. My new toy. I'm having some fun blapping at some defenseless engineers. I can see him running across the surface there. Hoping to get some mass. No mass for you, sir. Goodbye. Can't believe it. As we enter now the 28th minute, it is still a 4v4. Usually the higher the rated the game, the shorter they last. But every once in a while you get a game like this that goes on for a little bit. And it looks like Exited is chucking his spam forward into the opposing Navy. And it looks like the Navy has now been handed over to Icy. He's going to be able to manage this more effectively himself got a mixture of Cybern and UEF ships there and I can't believe he's just been able to chew through an awful lot of Exited's navy there. Exited running out of units. Yes, he does have the battleship. Well, he's also got a load of T2 destroyers. Looks like uh, Exited has also been handed over a gift. Of course, this battleship here belongs to Aeon. Also got a load of destroyers belonging to Aeon, so some nice teamwork it's never nice to hand over very expensive units to somebody else but at some point you've got to realize one person dealing with one engagement whether it's land or air or sea is better than two people trying to independently manage things and here we go Terrari moves his ball of restorers in and that is going to be a perfect counter to all of these destroyers that with the battleships was starting to look a little worrying there for IC. A load of torpedo bombers moving in from Shady Mima. And those those restorers are gonna be just brutal. The torpedoes go down almost for naught. They do pick off one destroyer that was already heavily damaged, but yeah. That was not at all a good engage for those not familiar. It takes a torpedo, well, about four or five torpedo bombers, all of which dropping a torpedo to destroy one full health 
destroyer. So to ten send ten or fifteen torpedo bombers in after one heavily destroyed destroyer, heavily damaged, should we say destroyer? Not the best. And it looks like exited here, just real aggressive with the NG, sending forward, just building shit, triple A, spam, all sorts, and that is going to tie up the target in computers of, of, of IC's uh, navy here, who does now have a battleship, but of course the battleship, yeah, it shoots massive weapons, but it can only shoot them at one place at once, and so if you send all this little stuff in, it's just going to surround it and tie it off. We do have a nuke out somewhere, and it's from Protect, so maybe nabbing all that mass from all those navy engages has paid off. New traversing slowly but surely to the northeastern side of the map. I have to see, does Terrari or his team have stuff in place to shoot it down? Well, I'm going to find out momentarily. Or is it going to go after the naval yard of Bio? It's moving in. It's going down. It's descending. Boom. Bio there. Yeah, in chat, unhappy face. I don't doubt it, pal. I've felt that a hundred times. And then some. That is a demoralizing thing to have happen. And what's even more demoralizing is Exited is really starting to make progress now and not just with Tech 1 spam. He's pushing through spam, Tech 2 destroyers and three battleships. And he's got cruisers behind all of that providing long range missiles as well as air screen. Although Terrari moving in with his ball of death. And I'm wondering how long is he going to hang around? Of course the... Uh, Cruisers, as well as having Sam's, the Serra's, have also got flak. So you don't want to hang this ball around too long. And he's just about keeping his mate in the game. Just. Looks like Exited is undeterred. Is still pushing forward. Somehow Gib has been unable to break through, and that's in no small part. Terrari here gotten into the Navy game. Traditionally the air player. No doubt seeing his pal there AS go down minutes ago. But I need to get in there producing something, otherwise the front's gonna collapse. And if the front's collapsing, I'm next. Fiery is looking very secure in the rear here. Doesn't look like there's been anything their side of the map for quite some time. Although that could change. Terrari here moving a defense sat over. Terrari, of course, an Aeon player. So he's clearly asked for somebody. Hey, give us that tech three. From UEF. Looks like the Fiery's have pinged it. And they are now sending out another nuke. Protect. How many kills did that initial nuke get? 103. I have to see if this one makes it through. And it looks like Exited is finally going to knock Icy out of the drink. And if that's Icy's ACU, and it is... He is going to want to think about moving and pronto if he's got any intention of staying alive for more than about 20 seconds. The nuke here from Protect over on the north side. Is this going to be the second one? I see ACU going down there. AS's base going down to the nuke. After 34 minutes... We finally lose a player. Oh! Terrari! He gets the nuke with his sat. I don't believe it. Protect. Allowing his shield network to collapse. Instantly pauses all his air factories to re-divert all of his energy over to shields. And that lapse in concentration loses him the nuke. 
The newt that was serving Fiery so well. Coolies are going to be glad about that. There's so much flack here. Don't move your restorer ball in. All right, move your restorer ball in. Maybe Terrari thinks I've got to do this, otherwise it's over. I realise it's going to cost me a lot, but what can I do? I'm surprised he didn't lose more. I mean, you see a lot of them are damaged. Bio playing incredibly well here. Exited, though. Playing a little better. Pushing through. What's left of IC's base has gone over to Terrari. And, of course, Terrari, the best player there. Not just uh, for the Coolies, but on the entire game at 1892. And he's got his Restorer ball into some battleships. And it looks like there's nothing shooting up at him. Finish off the battleship, for goodness sake, before you retarget. Gets a missile ship. Looks like he's off for another battleship. I can't believe that the fire is allowing this to happen. At this point, it really feels like it's Terraria's Restorers or it's game. He does have a couple of defense stats in the back of the fiery's bases. But it really feels like the action comes down to what's happening here on the front line. Restorer ball pulls out, not before picking off yet another battleship. What's left of Bio's Tech 3 Navy is about to go down. And Restorer Ball just putting out massive amounts of death. And so far, the Fireys haven't got an answer. Wow. Have some of that Aeon Battleship. How'd you like the taste of lasers from the sky? Oh, not very much, it would seem. I'm just thinking, if Terrari can finish off this navy, he's managed to get a battleship in, a Tempest, an experimental submersible battleship, but I'm not sure that's going to last very long. But I'll tell you what, while it did last the... I don't know, a few moments it did. It will have redirected the fire that would have otherwise been aimed at their bases. We've got a shed load of support commanders in the drink here from Terrari. And they're just spamming out those torpedo, Tech 1 torpedo launchers. That together with restorer balls. And suddenly we have an air engage. Protect finally moves in. Is it enough? Well, it looks like it's going to be very close. Terrara moving in a, another wave of restorers. So much destruction there. Looks like Terrari has stacked all of his gunships on one spot in the sky. And it appears to have worked. Protect running away. At this point, it's time for a shed load of air, repairs, air repair things. Protect moving in for a second run. And Restorers once again seems that that's the standard tactic move them all onto one spot SACU's now spamming up SAMs and that will cause Protect to think twice about what he's going to do even more Restorers moving in there's so many SAMs here this, despite the overwhelming number of ASF that Protect has is going to tip air back over to the Coolies wow, Terrari showing why he's the highest rated player 
on this game. But it looks like the fires are just relentless with their navy. They know they're losing navy left, right and centre. But they're pushing it up. And I'll tell you what, with all of these missiles, I think they may begin to crack the base. Just look at them, man. Terrari is spamming missile defence. And despite... Aeon missile defense being completely OP. It's only going to work for so long. There's just so many missiles coming in here. Unbelievable. Every one of those little streaks being yet more and more missiles. Look, 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 look. Aeon with a, their weird defense there. Bang! Aster finally going down. I'm surprised he lived as long as he did right on the coastline there. Bio, what's he doing? Brass. Well, better late than never. You're kind of out in the open. If these missiles get retargeted onto Bio, his ACU is going to last somewhere between 1, 1.5 seconds, something like that. you got to start and wonder, other than having some sats going around the extremities, picking off isolated mechs, has Terrari got out else on the cards? I'm just wondering how long can he maintain? Well, providing that the Fireys don't use this massive naval screen to start setting up shop on the coastline and moving land forces in, it may hold, but at some point... Someone on the team of the Fireys is going to go, hang on, we got so much defence here. Let's start putting factories down. Start reclaiming, start spamming artillery units, something. Shady here, just picking off some isolated points that just need doing just to turn the map green. Exited, doing the same on the south side. Why not? If Terrari had an APM spay, he could maybe move these Wagners around, but I guess he's too busy with what's going on at base. And finally, Exited is look like he's starting to set up shop over on the Coolies' side. Terrari 19 fails all the time. I'm used to it. Exited can't help but laugh. Bio says Curse of TMM. I just think, have you got anything? Well, <laughs> he's working on a Paragon, but it can't help but think that that is a little ambitious. That said, if he finishes it and he's got all of this, nah, we'll have to see. It all depends on if the Fireys can switch into gear two and start doing something other What's he doing? Is he going for reclaim? He is. Sends SAUs in the drink to start reclaiming. And they are going to chew the, <laughs> the hit points off these ships. Very nice. Legit tactic, especially if the Fireys are short on torpedo stuff. They've just got long range cruisers and battleships. These SAUs are just going to start reclaiming this almost for free. And they're not doing a bad job. And of course, not only are they basically killing the units, they're reclaiming so much eco. And all that eco is going to get dumped into this Paragon that is now over 50% complete. We'll have to see. Just going to speed up time one notch because it's all down to what goes on over here. Unless, of course, he could pick off uh, a commander over from the fiery side that's chilling somewhere where it shouldn't be. Exited though, oh, with the arse washer, we've got donuts about to come online for Shady. 
Paragon now at 3,200 hit points out of five. And the SACUs, I'm surprised they've cleaned out a huge amount here. And they're still going just on reclaim duty. Finally, though, exited recognizing we need to send some subs in here. We, we can't allow this madness to continue. And the subs, even though they're just tech one, will eventually destroy them. There's a couple of badly damaged ACUs. But looks like for now, they're still just about getting away with it. But as soon as the ACUs come up top, they get immediately pummeled by about a million battleships. No exaggeration. And some of the longest range missiles now reaching well into side of Terrari's base that is undefended this flank. And uh, Bio's just been left to do his own thing, of course. Raz taking forever and a day because he's got no eco. All the eco being consumed by Terrari. <laughs> I wonder if the fire is just like, he's, he's working on a paragon, just let him have it. And as soon as he finishes it, we'll move in. <laughs> this is hilarious, Terrari. <laughs> Perfect counter and all. Of course, it wouldn't take the Fireys much to start sending in torpedo bombers, but I guess they're having too much fun. Do they even know? Well, it's there. They've not marked it, but that's not to say they haven't pinged it. And those sats, you know, they're not doing nothing. They're destroying little bits in the back, but uh, all the action really is at the front. Bio. Uh, it feels like they're deliberately letting this guy live. Terrari with a new bank of TMD, the tactical missile defense. Paragon, 4,170 out of 5,000, so he's well over 80% of the way there. Support commander still... Oh, he does manage somehow to shoot down... The donut, apologies for missing it. It does seem that Terrari, at least in this area, has got air. Is anybody on the other side? Oh, they do have a few, but not many. Got that ass washer there in the middle by exited. I guess it's more of a... We're not rushing to send it in. It's more of a... Stocking things up. Exited, finding something funny. Paragon now 90% complete. GC with 70 odd kills here. Very nice. 80. 90. And then goes down. And the Paragon's up. Terrari has the Paragon here on minute 47. The best player versus an entire fiery team. All four players has the Paragon. He immediately starts handing resources over to Bio, who, of course, does not gain from the Paragon, belonging to another team member. And that's why we see Bio handing resources over. That will give Bio access to resources. And like that, his upgrade that took five hours to work suddenly completes in five seconds. Two arse washers now from Exited. Does Terrari... I assume he's got Omni. Well, they're able to detect units. Um, ah, these are from the... Yeah, I think they've got Omni. Exited moving in then with the arse washers and it looks like... Down goes the bomb. Down goes the second. Oh, they're hover bombing above the Paragon. One of them misses. The other one's almost dead. Oh my God, how could you screw that up? You had two bombs. 
Oh, <laughs> he screwed it up. The paragon should not have been allowed to live. Exit, it's going to be kicking himself after that. How can you be so bad with an ass washer goes into the chat yet? Yeah. And he had two of them. <laughs> and all he had to do was get one of the wrecks landing on the Paragon, even if they didn't fire. Terrari with his donut going after SACUs from the fireys that are starting to land on the base, on the beach here. Picks off one of them. What, we make it rapid fire artillery salvation coming in. We've got GCs here. Oh, I'm really rooting for Terrari because he's like right up in the corner. We've got three satellites in the rear. Oh, we've got Scathis on the way from Protect. It's like 80-90% complete. What are these guys going for? Well, it looks like he's trying to take out the shields. I just think Protect is, is just going to keep working on more shields and more shield upgrades. But that said, Scaphis is starting to chuck long-range artillery right across. SACU's going bang. Now, with these satellites and the Scaphis, they're going to be able to chew through these shields working together. The Scaphis... Don't matter that the fire's indiscriminate, it's just got to get through the shields. Finally, the shield's starting to go down, and with it, the sats are able to micro and pick off these shields. Look at all the reinforcements going down here for shields. Protect knows he's got to pre prevent these shields from going down. He's basically forgot about the Scaphis while he's working entirely on shields. Quick look over on the other side then. Fire is continuing to push. And GC here with 101 kills. Very nice work. Is keeping him in the game. He needs to be able to keep producing these guys though. He's got another GC over here. When you zoom out, the SACU's dying is louder than anything else in the game. It's bizarre. GC moving into a shed load of spam. Thing is, with this many shields, they can probably swarm and prevent his main gun from firing. He has to keep this Paragon alive. He's got another GC. Send it forward. Terrari's going to be absolutely exhausted at this point. Whenever you're playing a long game like this, we're into the 51st, coming on to the 52nd minute. Especially when you've done more than your fair share. And we certainly cannot say any less than that for Terrari. You just feel worn out. You're almost relieved when the game's over. Win, lose or draw. Protect this time moving in with the arse washer. And it looks like it's ground firing right in front of the Paragon. Not on, but just in front. Is he going to control K it? He does. Boom! Sorry for anyone's eardrum there, but I had to say it. And with that, Protect showing how to use the arse washer. Control K it, of course, the wreck. As a wreck isn't a unit and therefore falls harmlessly through a shield. Paragon, of course, once it's destroyed, behaves like a nuclear missile going off. When can I win a 4v1 without, abu without abusing broken units? And I think there Terrari is referring to the fact that uh, Protect... Control K's his bomber in the sky, turning a fully functional unit into a wreck in the sky, which allows it to pass through the shields. But at this point, you got to think... Is it abusing broken 
units i don't know i don't know if you could call that abuse i know people have been doing it since my day 10 years ago i'm sure if there was enough of a ruckus about it they could modify the shields to keep out rex He's almost got a second Paragon, but it uh, has got a couple of GCs over here keeping out some of the crap from the fireys. He's got what's left of his Restorer Ball. He's got RT that's continuously raining down on the opponent's base. Yeah, he's starting to have to take his eye off the ball, which is allowing protect here to get more and more shields up of course if all you had to focus on was this you could use your satellites to ensure that shields can't get constructed like he was doing just there of course you can't do that the whole time certainly not when you've got a million things else to do ah terrari i feel for you pal it's starting to look like your days are numbered gib 80 realizing we've got to start pushing onto his base with more than just navy on the coast and i don't know why it took the fireys so long to do that finally terrari thinks sod it hand me the towel i'm chucking it and who can blame him very well played there bio remains in the game in name only where is he There he is. Why didn't I see him? Well, blind. Who knows what he's doing? Is he working on a, a teleporter and hoping to then convert that into a Billy Nuke in back of Fiery's base? Like we saw in that other game the other day, that guy. Everything was lost and he managed to pick off someone on the other team with a Billy Nuke. Alas, no. Bio capitulates. Minute 55. Absolute brilliant game. Uh, without a doubt, player of the game. This time goes to Terrari. Very well played, mate. Other very, very notable mentions here. Uh, exited. I thought played a blinder. And Gib as well. Brilliant game. And until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care, bye-bye. Thank you for everyone in chat. Nice to see you all there. Of course, I'm fully task-saturated. But I don't want to shut it down because it's a nice place for you all to meet. And so, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Really, I enjoyed that one. Fantastic game taking place today, January the 24th, 2023. Bye-bye.